Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and assalamu alaikum. My name is Kiran Amir and I welcome you all as an administrator of Parsa HealthNet Echo. This is the sixth session organized under Parsa Echo COVID response banner. We would like to thank you all for taking part in our simple registration process. This step is being taken for the benefit of all concerns and in the interest of efficiency. We hope we will get further uh, cooperation from you in this regard in the future. Today's session is about imaging in COVID-19 and today's session lead is Dr. Najmuddin. Dr. Najam is a consultant radiologist at the Diagnostic Center Lahore, at Lahore and University Hospital of North Midlands, Stoke on Trent, UK. Apart from having credentials in IR, body imaging and pediatric radiology, he is also president of Radiological Society of Pakistan. Dr. Najam is an advisor consultant for radiology in Punjab Health Commission and a faculty member and examiner in radiology at CPSB. He also serves as a member of NCCN guidelines in radiology for MENA region. Dr. Varda will present the case for today and after that I would like Dr. Najam to please brief us about today's topic. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. I will share screen on behalf of Dr. Vada. Dr. Vada, are you with us? Uh, yes, Susan. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Uh, yes, Jean. we can see. That. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. The case is a 70 year old female, housewife, diabetic, hypertensive, on prochlorperazine, citagliptin, metformin, bisprolol, ACE inhibitor, angiotensin 2 antagonist, and epagliflozin. On 23rd June, she reported to us with fever of 10 days. Initially, amoxicillin and paracetamol was given. Currently, on cefoperazone and selbectum, 2 gram IVBD, and azithromycin. Mild cough, no nausea or vomiting, and reduced intake. Her saturation was 85 to 90 on room air and 93 to 96 with oxygen. I advised COVID PCR, which was refused by the family and immediately shifted to the hospital. On 26 June, the update was given that the patient is not well. Sun says that her X-ray is worsened, cuff has increased, got a prescription with enozaparin, piperacillin, tezobectum, oxazelid, dynon, dexamethasone, asking permission to start. Some more labs are also available, but didn't get the COVID PCR done. Her x-ray on 21st June was this, and her labs are on 22nd June and 26th June. HP was 12.8 on 22nd June, and on 26th June it was 12.3. TLC was 4.3 initially, and then it was 6.1. Polymorphs were 45 initially, and then 61. Lymphocytes are 48 initially, and then 32. Platelets were 175, and then 239. Bilirubin was 0.5. ALT was three, uh, 37, AST was 42, alkaline phosphatase was 76, albumin was 2.6, and CRP was uh, 1.45 initially, and then 8.45. D dimers were 138, ferritin was 39.6 initially, and then 107.6, LDH was 436 initially, and then uh, 347. Her X-ray on 26 June was this. My, uh, my questions are, what are findings on chest x-ray? Should I order HRCT thorax to get more information here? And family refuses shifting to hospital and won't get tested for COVID-19 also. What should we do in such a situation? Thank you very much, ma'am. I'm going to stop share. Over to you, Mrs. Kiran. Uh, the, uh, thank you. Uh, I think what uh, I'll request uh, Dr. Najmuddin, we are truly honored uh, for him to be with us and uh, once uh, Dr. Najam, after Dr. Najam presentation, we will be discussing the access. G. Dr. Najam, uh, over to you. Thank you, Asad. Uh, Karan, thank you for the kind introduction. I hope you can hear me well. Yes, we can hear you well, yes. Fine, I'll continue. Uh, do you want me to answer uh, the three questions we just, which you just asked? I think my talk will actually answer all these questions as we go along. So let's wait till the end, if that's all right with you. 
so uh, i'll share uh, ozair shall i share my uh, slides now ji ji uh, please yes, we can see your slides uh, aap uh, isko uh, yes excellent right uh, let me get rid of you guys first and so that i can see my slides um so today uh, we're going to talk about imaging for covid-19 i'll give you a bit of pakistan's perspective on that uh when i refer to the word imaging imaging means all kind of uh, armament which radiologist would have under his belt but i will primarily confine myself to x rays uh, which is obviously in this case chest x rays and ct of the chest although a lot is being done and said about ultrasound use in uh, the icu setting and elsewhere but i will refrain from touching on that at the moment i have no uh, uh, obvious disclosures apart from the fact that uh, i am talking here on behalf of the radiology society of pakistan as its president uh, starting off way back in uh, uh, april uh, in fact to be very precise uh, 5th of april this was the state of affairs and the pakistan uh, website on covid was showing very low level of infection small figures of 2880 uh, not many deaths at that time the worst figures were mostly from gilgit baltistan baltistan because a lot of uh, people came from iran and uh, went back to gb but again uh, not much of uh, scare at scare mongering in fact at that time but this is the state of affairs as of yesterday today i was trying to upload the recent thing but uh, they still are probably updating so i uh, i'm not sure exactly why i couldn't get these slides today so we have crossed 210 figure today uh, today uh, the uh, thing to note is the last 24 hour figure next to it is only 2846 and this is as i go along i'll show you why this is relatively low the death figure is uh, 118 as of yesterday uh, the total was 4304 again sin is leading and i'll again touch on the reason why a sin is leading on the on the figures up here although the overall deaths in punjab are higher than sin our graph is still going up we don't uh, see the uh, peak coming in the near future we don't know where exactly it is directed are we uh, flattening a bit or not let's hope we are but that's the uh, curve as of now uh, today in fact the highest number of uh, uh, cases which were picked up were on june 13 interestingly this was 6825 in a day and that's the day when we did the most testing in fact if you look at the daily test conducted and this is uh, a new thing on the uh, a covid website of government of pakistan you can see that how waxing and waning the uh, pink figures are that is for punjab how uh, uh, the variation of testing is uh, for every province in fact but at the last minute on 27th of june you can see how high the bar for send is and they tested the most on that one particular day so testing matters if we test more we get more figures and that's what this curve reflects again is a war between or a race between punjab and sind as to how uh, good we are doing in uh, keeping this upstroke of our uh, graph but in fact one thing to note is that Gil Gil gilgit uh, baltistan once they started with a higher figure uh, proportionately you know as as a, a million population uh uh was taken into account but the graph has remained at a slope so they behave pretty well compared to the rest of the population of pakistan in fact in keeping this graph way low down there so um in uh, early april that's around 2nd of april this is what uh, the guidelines were put up 
at the national uh, site. And this is the summary of the guidelines. Uh, it was uh, basically based on PCR negative or positive and then segregating their patients between mild or asymptomatic, moderate and severe clinical. Uh, thereafter, there was not much to talk about in this uh, pathway really. And uh, we had a lot of discussion uh, with the people concerned at the top, uh, in particularly in the NIH, uh, about where we as radiologists uh, stand and we wanted to contribute. But then again, we were as, at a loss uh, talking to these people. However, looking at this graph, you can uh, see how from January onwards, once the Chinese thing got to the top, the China lockdown started, uh, the world graph started peaking when we crossed half a million case. And that's about the time when uh, we at Radiologic Society of Pakistan kind of woke up, which was to be very precise, 26th of March. We thought this is not going away and it's coming our way. So as a society, we made a decision to do a lot of things and uh, take action. So our website got active. We established a lot of committees and we established a lot of guidelines thereafter. And this is one of the samples from our website. It's on our website, which is uh, uh, kept abreast and updated practically every third week. We have a new version of our documents. So we have put up all these guidelines up for use by everybody from all across the uh, medical fraternity. So this, the fourth version was released on 14th of June by RSP. And you can see we covered practically every component which is required and you've been discussing for the last five sessions on COVID which you had. So I'll refer, confine myself to imaging findings or so not talk about the pandemic uh, PPEs and stuff uh, related to disinfection process. This is the proposed pathway which we actually floated early in April in fact. And what it uh, stressed upon was to keeping uh, the asymptomatic patients and mild patients out, relying on CBC and other parameters to make decisions. We stressed on the use of imaging in moderate, severe, and critical patients. And uh, the point was to try to segregate these patients into different pathways where they would either go into uh, observed management, go home, or be brought into the ICU and that was based in principle on the chest x-ray findings initially which uh, uh, guided us towards doing a CT or not and that's one of the questions which you just asked in uh, the earlier case presentation and based on the patterns we would uh, have either an equivocal CT, a diagnostic CT or a burden which was labeled as moderate to severe and I'll come to this later on. Since then, in May, in fact, which is fairly recently, last month, uh, a global multinational consensus statement was released from the Fleshner Society. And this society actually takes care of chest imaging protocols globally, and they are the leaders and forerunners in the US. So they took this task up and got everybody together. So this was from Japan to Seattle uh, to Alaska. In fact, for that matter, everybody was involved. You can see how many people got engaged in this. And this came out in, uh, uh, in uh, May 2020. You can see that RSNA shared this article with uh, uh, and uh, published it with CHEST as well. But cutting it down to a very brief uh, essentials, uh, what they said was imaging is not indicated in patients suspected of having coronavirus. And that means no X-ray, no uh, uh, CT, uh, coronavirus disease, if it is mild, unless they are, they are at risk for disease progression. So the word progression has been added very careful, carefully in this thing. Imaging is only indicated in a patient with COVID-19 and worsening respiratory symptoms. So that's a thing which is attached to this statement. In a resource-constrained environment, that's our environment, in fact, imaging. So they've taken into account people who do not have a cross-board CT and chest X-rays and even given recommendations for people like us as well. Imaging is indicated for medical triage of patients suspected of having COVID-19 
So that's the lacunae which we were asking our uh, NIH people to look at, who present with moderate to severe clinical features and a higher pretest probability of disease. So these are the exact three essentials which this consensus statement highlighted. And they presented three scenarios. The first one was mild features consistent with COVID-19. Pre-test probability was any, but there were no significant resource constraints. So they relied mostly on COVID-19. And then you can see if a state can offer close to 100,000 tests in a day, then they can use this graph for their practical uh, uh, triaging. So if it was positive and the risk factors for the disease progression were there, then only imaging was indicated. And if there, there was further worsening of the respiratory status, you followed it up with imaging. Otherwise, there was no justification to use imaging, even in the best of these spaces in the world. The second scenario was in cases of moderate to severe features consistent with COVID-19. I would not go into the details as to how we clinically quantify or uh, segregate patients into moderate or severe features. I'm sure you all know it more than I do. And the pretest probability was again, any of the pro uh, uh, levels, but no significant resource constraints. Again, COVID-19 starting point positive, going on to imaging, and then depending whether there was worsening or not of the respiratory systems, imaging was indicated. But if it was negative, there was a full stop, nothing as far as uh, imaging indication up front. So this is more relevant to our clinical setting and uh, moderate to severe features consistent with COVID-19 if they were detected initially. And there was higher pretest probability of COVID-19 and there was obvious resource constraint. That means that bed, ventilators, medical personnel, PPs, and everything was constrained. Is rapid COVID test available? That was the first question. If yes, fine, do it. If not, then imaging was being stressed upon. And based on this, pre-existing guidelines were eventually, if uh, an alternative diagnosis was made, you went on to treat pneumonias, effusions, cardiac failures, and stuff like that. But if not, then you would triage based on the findings of medical uh, imaging, which you ha would have done. On the other side, if you had COVID-19 positive and then imaging was done, which was chest X-ray, relying on that, you could follow it up on chest X-ray. If this was worsening, you could decide between imaging uh, 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 with the chest X-ray and or CT, depending how your resources were constrained at that time of management and, look, and your actual location. So in fact, on 2nd of June, the uh, NIH has updated their guidelines. I'm sure you've all seen these updated guidelines. And now they become much more robust, in fact, applicable to our day in day out management. And I'm sure all of you are now uh, probably adhering to these man management uh, pathways as well. Now you can appreciate the recommendations which we made in April, early April, and then supported by uh, uh, the consensus statement by Feshner, we are back to square one. And the square one was actually uh, the basis on which Wuhan teams, the three big teams, recommended this pathway. And this is where we stand now in June. Uh, and we are practicing the same thing. So chest x-rays come up uh, way up in the uh, pattern of assessment. So if chest x-rays with infiltrates had less than 50% of lung involvement, your pathway was uh, along the moderate uh, management pathways. And if it was more than 50%, and obviously relying on the saturation, which is less than 90% in contrast to what it was here, uh, between 90 and 94%, you would obviously be handling a severe or a critical patient. So immediate hospital, uh, HDU or ICU admissions were required. And obviously further going on, depending how the, uh, the uh, uh, respiratory symptoms would worsen, you would take on uh, imaging thereafter as well. So let's come to imaging findings the thing which you probably all gathered here at 10 p.m. 
predominant uh, distribution of the disease in the lungs is peripheral and that too in the mid and lower lung zones and it's basically mnemonic patches what we refer to in the early disease is ground glass opacities and the word which is used for that is ggo followed by that the mixed pattern of crazy paving appears and then we have florid consolidations which you all clinicians have seen during your clinical practice as low bar consolidations or segment or segmental consolidations thereafter when it's resolving you can see reticulations vascular dilatations traction bronchiectasis and subfloral glands so let's uh, see how it progresses the features on imaging how do they change so looking at these uh, bar charts and uh, the color codings the the earliest changes which we pick up on whether on chest x-ray or ct it remains more or less the same pattern so before onset of illness or early disease where you are practically uh, into the phase of mild disease or asymptomatic most predominant pattern is of ggo which is ground glass consolidation and as we progress towards the end of the week the ground glass tends to reduce and there's an overlap of obvious uh, reticular exchanges and a bit of consolidation coming in and you can see how the overall uh, uh, ground glass pattern keeps on reducing being replaced by uh, a lot of other things which is reticular pattern the mixed pattern and the consolidation so there is this is the overlap which we will witness in the later uh, phases of the uh, disease going more towards second to third weeks uh, of illness. So let's look at a chest x ray of a 45 year old male with PCR positive uh, 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 pattern. It's day two of his uh, clinical symptoms, uh, which is uh, only minimal, which is occasional cough. And if you look at the chest x ray, really you are at a loss. Whether does he have any disease or not? Should we have done a chest x ray in this patient? That's another question. Uh, not really. We should not have because if this was mild disease, we should have let him know. Let's move on. I just want to demonstrate the case. This is a PCR positive with negative chest x-ray so we cannot really pick up anything significant on this x-ray and the reason is the chest x-ray can be very insensitive in early stages if you look at the x-ray on this side again just like the previous chest x-ray you really cannot pick up any air space abnormality the term which we use is air space abnormality and what we're looking for any ground glass changes but in contrast a CT has been performed in this patient and you can see how the ground, ground glass changes are present in the lateral segment of right low lobe. And these are the changes which CT is capable of picking up even at one hour after uh, the symptoms uh, uh, appear in a patient. But chest x-ray chest is not really sensitive at this level. But again, let me reiterate, screening CT to diagnose or exclude COVID-19 is currently not recommended and that's documented well documented so don't use it for documenting uh, disease or not unless there is a higher risk uh, probability and or patient is becoming symptomatic so the distribution in a in a typical covid patient would be peripheral distribution which is close to the chest wall you can see these fluffy shadows Again, they are in the middle and lower lung zones more than the upper lung zones. And these are mostly fluffy and that's why we refer to them as ground glass uh, changes. Uh, consolidations are much more dense. And you know, if I was to uh, point out a part of the consolidation, this probably would be the consolidating factor in it. And you can on occasions pick up uh, air bronchograms. One thing which uh, supports uh, COVID more than anything else. For us, it becomes much more easier if we don't see any effusions or any medicinal lymphadenopathy because that's not a hallmark for COVID disease. We do not see anything in the way of a small pleural effusion either. So let's move on. The sensitivity for COVID-19 related uh, lung shadowing ranges roughly between 25 to 69%. And that's a very wide percentage. And that, why is this? Because 
obviously we need uh, to uh, uh, appreciate if we, uh, if we are trying to uh, evaluate sensitivity in early disease it will be close to 25 percent if the patient is being followed up on multiple chest x-rays then sens sensitivity obviously will be 69 percent however the specificity is up to 90 percent so it can exclude disease quite uh, confidently while no signs of the disease were visible in the x-ray within the first three days after the onset of coughing and fever they were most obvious after 10 to 12 days. So that's the reason for this wide range of 25 to 69%. <coughs> Excuse me. The Fleshner Society's view on this thing is that chest x-rays might be appropriate for patients already receiving inpatient care to assess the course of the disease and evaluate the pneumonia due to any other causes. So remember, we can have super added infections and that's one of the reasons you can use and you are using other antimicrobials on top of the standard regimen for COVID disease. And how to follow them up? Let's take a look at the example uh, of following up on chest x-rays. Uh, you can see in this patient that uh, this is a rotative film at admission. This is how it was. Uh, there was a lot of uh, peripheral consolidation, more so on the right side compared to the left, but it's bilateral disease. In this, which uh, relatively more symmetric uh, patient, we can see that disease is uh, comparable on both sides. And this is the time patient is apparently already in the HDU. You can see all the uh, lines and uh, the central line uh, attached. And this is where the patient is already probably getting uh, high volumes of oxygen in it. But when they get intubated, which is within the next 24 hours, so you can see how quickly it progresses in the 24 hours time. And it's about time this patient was uh, uh, intubated. You can see the hyperinflation effect and it's all splattering. The actual soft tissues, the soft GGOs, uh, disappear, kind of disappeared over here and they are now all across uh, both lungs. So all segments are involved. Again, this is the time when patient is intubated. You can see distribution is widespread all across. This is how a RDS pattern would appear for any reason, in fact, not just for COVID disease. But again, I'll share with you how it appears on CT scan later on. So for all practical purposes, and I'm sure that's what you uh, uh, saw when you were in training during your medical school, the lungs can be divided into upper, mid, and lower lungs. So there are six zones which form the basis of our distribution or uh, uh, description. And that's what was proposed for reporting language for grading of disease related to COVID-19 on frontal chest x-ray. So we were grading them into mild, moderate, or severe. So if we had opacities in one to two lung zones, it was mild. Three to four, it was moderate. And if it was more than four, then it was labeled as severe disease. It's a very simple uh, way of describing what we were seeing on chest x-rays and communicating with the treating physicians. So grading and quantifying severity of COVID-19 lung disease on successive chest rays, x-rays, let's look at this example as well. It's a 63 year old man with COVID-19 presents with one day of fever and myalgia. That was the one, the first day one x-ray in which it's practically normal. We do not see any infiltrates on either side. So this is what we labeled as mild, frankly, nothing at all. So next, uh, 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 he comes back on day two and later worsens symptoms and he was admitted in ICU. You can see that there is one component of abnormality here, the other one over here, and there are some fluffy shadows in the left lower lobe. You'll have to take my word for it. Patient is already intubated, central line is there, a lot of hardware has been attached to the patient. It's already in the ICU. And this is with virtue by virtue of the three lung involvement, it will be labeled as moderate uh, level of disease on chest x-ray. And when it comes to severe disease, you can, you know, there's no doubt everybody would point it out that every, all six are involved and it's widespread disease. And that's what we refer to as severe lung disease on chest x-ray. So that's how grading and quantification 
of severity of COVID-19 can be done on plain x-rays. Now we are getting into the era of artificial intelligence. So AI can give us precisely by color coding as to what volume of the lung is involved. And this makes it much more easier. In fact, uh, uh, one of the groups in Islamabad is working on this protocol and uh, I don't know uh, when it's going to be floated, but this is exactly what they're aiming to do as a walkthrough chest x-ray, which Penn State has already instituted in their clinical practice. So you come up to uh, a garage, a chest x-ray is done, you turn your car around, and within five minutes, you get your results and you are told whether to come into the hospital or go back home. So that's the basis of AI deciding for you where you stand. You know, the severity is more, the color coding and the de depth of the disease tells you what the volume of consolidation would be present within these uh, lung segments. And if it was minimum, you can still pick up subtle ground glass changes, which we could not pick up on chest x-ray, but they are obvious because AI can pick up interferences or impedances across airways segment by segment. So what about CT? Let's go through it quickly before I lose your attention, your attention. So imaging for CT in ultra early ages is mostly done uh, well at our clinic to start off with that. Most of the private clinics who are not truly doing CT imaging for uh, proper COVID imaging, they would come across such images much more often than anybody else. So what you will see is, is a scattered a single focus of ground glass opacity like this. There will be multiple nodules in it. And these uh, uh, black bits are actually representing residual airspace changes or the air bronchograms in it. And you can compare it with the rest of the normal lung around it. Some dilatation of the vessels in, in the vicinity of this uh, area of involvement, compare it with the normal vessels, slightly more dilated. So this is how the dilatation of the vessels can be appreciated with them. And as I said, this stage usually patients, uh, in, in patients without uh, clinical symptoms, negative laboratory tests, but positive throat swabs may be possible within one to two weeks after being exposed to a virus contaminant environment. And as I said, history of contact with a patient or multiple family members, uh, you know, they might have one or medical staff like most of us, uh, most of our staff had uh, problems. We uh, tested them with chest, chest CT. We picked these up. And in fact, to tell you the truth, for most uh, of the CTs of abdomen and pelvis we are doing, we are covering CT chest without any additional cost. And we have a huge number of such cases uh, in which we are incidentally picking up one or two such uh, focal areas of ground blood changes. And we're letting these patients know that they have COVID and they should get themselves tested. So early disease, you would have similar GGOs, but multiple in number. And you can also have honeycombing like grid, like a thickening into the I'll share those images with you. But this is early stage disease, one to three days uh, uh, disease. And the pathologic process during this stage is basically, as I said, dilatation of the vessels and congestion of the alveoli and septal capillaries filled with exudate and fluid. We can see that much more clearly on a bigger image. So this is what uh, happens when there is rapid progression thereafter. Then all these, uh, Im these uh, consolidations and GGOs tend to fuse and make large consolidate larger consolidations with or without air bronchograms and then you can also appreciate crazy batches why we call them and this is mostly around day three to day seven after clinical manifestations with progressive disease both clinically and radiologically and why we call it crazy paving you can now see it for yourself that this is like a honeycombing kind of a pattern which shows up you can argue that this is all around but let me share with you another case which is much more worse and we picked it up only just yesterday. You can see how septi are thickened and this becomes the, gives us that uh, typical pattern of crazy paving. Going back, this can transform into 
florid consolidation. And as I said, you can see GGOs, you can see consolidation, you can see air broker camps. So this is the type of pattern which you will see with a lot of overlap of all phases of infection as, we, uh, as the disease progresses. There's one more sign which is referred to as the reverse hello sign. In fact, uh, what happens is that in area of consolidation, you start seeing areas of clearing. And these are the areas of clearing. And it's thought that this is a good prognostic sign, probably uh, a reflection of re aeration of the central component of this uh, one lobule which was affected. And as I said, uh, they can progress to consolidation and the consolidations are typical. They are not different from any other bacteriologic uh, uh, mnemonic uh, patches, but you can appreciate the level of air space, uh, the uh, air bronchogram within these consolidations. A 60 year old male, let's share this uh, example with you from Wuhan, in fact, male who traveled from Wuhan, and this is from the early days of uh, data which came out from Wuhan, CT on, uh, uh, 27th of January after seven days of fever and cough now with follow-up CT four days later. So this row represents a scan only four days after this earlier scan. You can see how quickly the disease has progressed and taken over most of the normal air space uh, in both lungs. And that's where the, uh, the uh, patients, that's why the patients start to starve so quickly and so earlier on if their disease progresses rapidly. Then there is a, this uh, stage which is referred to as dissipating stage. And what happens is this is the consolidations then transform into strip-like opacities, which progressively become more thicker and uh, they become like, like bands. As in this case, you can see that uh, they become much more fibrotic and what happens is that they start pulling the airways into them and that's what we refer to them as uh, uh, traction bronchitis. So it's, they basically start pulling on the airways which remain patent, but uh, this eventually will transform into uh, round atelectasis. Uh, they can be widespread, this fibrosis, or it can be as significant as this. This is a case which we had only yesterday and this is a follow-up. And in fact, this patient is still not being admitted to tell you the truth. They have the whole progression of the disease in this patient is still being turned down and told to go back home. Fine, he went home. I don't know what happened. Anyway, all that progresses is not fibrosis every time. There is hope as well. So this consolidation, this ground glass transformed into consolidation, which started clearing and has actually started to disappear without any fibrosis. So you can have a very clean, whistle clean lung after having COVID infection. But then again, this is very common, the software which we have, we all of us in Pakistan have this software in our vitreas and our workstations. You can show the volume of aeration or air within the lung. This is how it looks like on a 3D. And if it is COVID riddled, you can see what volume of consolidation or exudate is filling up the airspace and replacing it within the lung. And this can be then extrapolated both from chest x-rays and from CT and given a value to it. So you can actually tell whether it's less than 50% or, or less than one third of the lung which is involved. And that becomes part of the report which is very essential for most of the critical uh, care for, and people and pulmonologists to decide what to do with these patients, whether to monitor them in HDU, CPAP, or move, on, move them on to intubation level. And this is what we have proposed, and this is the uh, classical pattern of uh, 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 reporting system. Uh, what we have uh, highlighted is the pattern uh, findings are first uh, uh, told about whether it's bilateral, uh, what do we see, consolidation, GGOs, location, whether it's peripheral, central, uh, what level of peribronchial involvement is there, and then crazy paving or septal thickening, stuff like that, and uh, vascular dilatation is talked about. But then again, a CT severity score has been developed, and this relies on basically giving marks for every component which we see. So maximum marks of are up to 40 
If there is uh, no disease in any of these segments, you give zero, or, or in that segment, you give zero. If there is the replacement of that segment by less than 50%, you give one. And if it's more than 50%, you give two. And that's how you score for right lung and then left lung and give scores on both sides. Like in this case, it's about up to 50% of lung is actually involved on this scoring system. So you define all these segments and it becomes a single language to convey the report uh, to the pulmonologist. And when you conclude, you have to decide whether it's a normal chest, if it's classical typical, you have to label it by giving stages of early progressive dissipated or healing. And you also have to highlight whether it's mild, severe, or critical. And if it's indeterminate, and you can have indeterminate, it's not always COVID. Every consolidation is not COVID. Then you have to highlight it's indeterminate, atypical, or it is clear. So recommendations for imaging. In the end, imaging is not routinely indicated as a screening test for COVID-19 in asymptomatic individuals. Remember that imaging is not indicated for patients with mild features of COVID-19 unless they are at risk for disease progression. Imaging is indicated for patients with moderate to severe features of COVID-19 regardless of the COVID-19 test results. And I repeat, regardless of the COVID-19 test results. Imaging is indicated for patients with COVID-19 and evidence of worsening respiratory status. So these are the parameters where imaging should be used and not for up, up, up here. In a resource constrained environment where access to CT is limited, chest radiography may be preferred for patients with COVID-19 unless features of respiratory worsening warrants use of CT. But we hardly see uh, CT being asked for or advised uh, commonly across Pakistan. There are a few centers who are using it, but not across Pakistan for their COVID patient grading. Thank you ever so much. Stay home, stay safe, and I'll take your questions at the end when I've Gee, taken my Thank time. you. Uh, thank you, Najam. Uh, as usual, you had a spellbinding session. Tha. Uh, up, uh, can you stop share? Yes, thank you. So uh, before we go further, I will quickly share the case and, and then we will have question and answer. So let me share the case here. I'll quickly summarize. So that's the patient, uh, 70 years, uh, female, diabetic, hypertensive, on treatment, 10 days history of fever, multiple antibiotics and worsening oxygen saturation. They were refusing COVID PCR shifting and also they refused shifting to hospital. Um, they are in our periphery and the sun comes to me. X-ray has worsened, cuff has increased and a cocktail, which is our WhatsApp ki favorite uh, prescriptions, hai, a cocktail of uh, multiple antibiotics and asking my permission to start. The labs are here uh, you can see a raised crp baki itna kharab nahi hai ye x ray hai ye mujhe aise hi bheja gaya tha maine badi koshish ki ki main isko rotate kar lu lekin main computer pe isko rotate nahi kar saka ulta seedha to kar saka lekin rotate well i disposed on 21st of june aur uske baad jab uski tabiyat kharab hui to ye 25 26 june ko x ray tha to both x rays are there in front of you uh, so uh, dr najam uh, there are two questions that I, uh, we would like to take your take or you can give the answer that you have given me if you don't mind. And one last question is that Farooq Khan is here. So it's a dilemma actually. I don't want to talk about treatment. If the patient says that I want to do whatever I want to do, then what will we do? So what do you want to say about this X-ray and CT scan? What do you want to say about this? पहला पॉइंट तो ये बड़ा क्लियर हो गया दैट कोविड 19 पीसीआर टेस्टिंग इज आउट द विंडो नंबर टू ये हो गया कि इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू परसुएड देम टू गेट देम पीसीआर देन आई डोंट नो व्हाई वी आर परसुएडिंग देम टू गेट ट्रीटेड फॉर फॉर दैट मैटर दे नीड टू फॉलो योर डिजायर्स एंड योर रिक्वायरमेंट्स तीसरा ये कि चेस्ट एक्सरे हैज बीन डन प्रॉपर्ली इट्स जस्टिफाइड You've already documented worsening of the disease in the follow-up chest X-ray. It's bilateral disease, moderate 
up to about 50% of lung volume is now involved, at least looking at these chest X-ray, inverted chest X-ray. So I don't know exactly if HR HRCT will add anything to this because you're following it up, you've got your desired uh, uh, clinical uh, output from the chest X-ray that it is progressive disease and it's worsening. So whatever you're doing, it might be stopping the super added infection from worsening, but COVID is progressing in this patient. And if they are not, if they are refusing to uh, ship the patient now to uh, uh, hospital and the saturation is dropping, so is true. Then they want to get rid of somebody. <laughs> okay. Family, you know, Marna Chandi, the Tanuki Maslai, or Tinso Doda, Parchakatale, Tanuki Maslai. But Acha Farooq, I'm not going to get into discussion. Najam, our teacher, and we are very fond of him. I may dance with the Tanka Vigavi. So, Farooq, a dilemma can be solved. I mean, this is a case, a teleclinic, we have a saturation is around 80 90. And they are refusing to listen, and he's adamant that this is a piprasilin, this is steroids, hai, uh, oxygen, we arranged it. Now, what do we have to do? Yes, Farooq. Yes, Farooq. Yes, Farooq. Can we unmute uh, Farooq? Uh, Zain? Yes, Farooq, unmute. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. First of all, very nice. Uh, presentation. Hepatologist ko bhi ab thode se chest x-ray padne aagayin iske baad. Very kind of you. It was very useful. Um, so man, you are in lockdown so you would... <laughs> uh, Lester lockdown ho gaya hai. It's bilkul aisa hai. We, uh, unfortunately, mein us wakit bhi lockdown nahi hua tha jab ye sara kuch ho raha tha actively. Because of the EUS and DRCP. We, we didn't stop the cancer treatment. Um, so we, we just had to carry on. अच्छा ये सो इसमें तीन बहुत मोटी मोटी चीजें एक एथिक्स पे हम बात करेंगे दूसरा यू गाइस माइट वांट टू आस्क कि अगर ये कोविड है हम अस्यूम कर लेते हैं कि इस बीबी को कोविड है हम ये अस्यूम कर लेते हैं पीसीआर भी पॉजिटिव है और आप एक टेलीफोन पे ट्रियाज पे बैठे एमओ के पास ये फैमिली इस पेशेंट को ले आती है ओके और तीसरी बात हम ये करेंगे कि क्या कोई ऐसा टेस्ट इस वक्त है जो 10 days into her presentation हमें ये confirm कर दे कि ये वाकई COVID although we all know it's COVID but let's go for the sake of argument so पहला question so um, ethics में let me make it very very clear and simple Pakistan में it's the family but ethics don't say that it's actually the patient अगर patient ये कह रहा है कि look I'm 70 year old I have lived my life and if this is how my terminal event is going to be, जो भी उसके beliefs हैं, चाहे वो religious beliefs हैं, चाहे वो cultural beliefs हैं, चाहे वो परदे की वजह से वो करना चाहती है, हम उसको force नहीं कर सकते। As long as उसको और उसकी family को हमने ये explain कर दिया है कि जिस situation में आप हो, so she is high risk group. She's 70, she's diabetic, and she's now in the severe category. So at this stage, she is right at the path that if she hospital, there is at least 40%, if not 50% chance that this woman will not survive. Ethically, if she believes that she doesn't have any role in her family, we have a slightly different practice in the UK, clearly. इसको मैं रिवर्स कर देता हूं कि मैंने बीबी से बात की बीबी अनश्योर है लेकिन फैमिली कहती है जी हमने मां को जाने नहीं देना तो मेरा थ्रू सेफ गार्डिंग लॉ एज अ मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर इट इज माय रिस्पांसिबिलिटी दैट आई इनफॉर्म हायर अथॉरिटीज टू रिमूव दैट पेशेंट फ्रॉम द फैमिली एंड टेक हर टू द हॉस्पिटल मेरे ख्याल में पाकिस्तान में करना आपके लिए बहुत मुश्किल होगा कि आप पुलिस को कहेंगे कि जी ये मारना चाह रहे हैं इसको ले जाएं बट दिस इज व्हाट द एथिकल लॉ इज अच्छा ऑन द कंट्रेरी अगर पेशेंट ये कह रही है कि नहीं मेरे वालिद साहब की ऐसे ही डेथ हुई थी 
मेरे हस्बैंड की भी ऐसी डेथ हुई थी मैं अपने घर में अपने बच्चों के पास मरना चाहती हूँ आप डॉक्टर साहब मुझे पहले ही ये बता रहे हैं कि अगर मैं हॉस्पिटल चली भी जाती हूँ और ये मैं आप लोगों को एक्सप्लेन कर चुका हूँ उस ग्राफ में कि मोर्टेलिटी ऑफ दिस ग्रुप इज ओवर थर्टी परसेंट तो आप मुझे पहले ही कह रहे हो कि जो मेरे जैसे लोग हॉस्पिटल जाते हैं चार दस में से मर जाते हैं तो मैं ये टाइम अपने बच्चों के साथ घर में गुजारना चाहती हूँ मेरा नहीं ख्याल हम उसको फोर्स कर सकते हैं जाने सो दैट्स एथिकल पार्ट आउट नाउ अच्छा नाउ द सेकंड पार्ट अगर हम एस्यूम कर लें कि ये कोविड है तो शी इज एट द वेरी वेरी राइट स्टेज वे यू विल शिफ्ट टू द हॉस्पिटल यू विल स्टार्ट ऑन ऑक्सीजन यू पुट ऑन डेक्सोन एंड आई प्रोबली विल गेवर एम डेस क्योंकि ये ऑक्सीजनेशन fairly quickly into if not ventilation but that's and third part acha kya main koi is waqt aisa blood test kar sakta hu jo mujhe ya koi bhi aisa test so yes the the idea is she is 10 days down the line 10 to 2 so probably igm will be positive in serology but may you may get igg negative jo aapko reassure kar degi false ki ye uh, covid hai so in in this particular case as uh, dr najam said not much point doing pcr now because she is day 10 she has grown out of that period but she would not necessarily have igg antibodies made as yet but for her to qualify for itu level treatment for remdesivir for dexamethasone all the covid paradigm one test that will reassure us in one way or the other would be igm okay thank you thank you um Uh, thank you farooq um, uh, for again an excellent elaboration bushra we have uh, a few questions yeah. for dr najam so if you suggest come up uh, ji najam isme sare mein aap jo inko telemedicine ke service provide kar rahe hain are you recording this somewhere save yourself from litigation kal ko aapke sheeshe todenge agar sir nahi padte so you need to actually record a bit of this conversation which you are having them and the things which you are offering them because tomorrow morning they will deny everything mm. yeah true ji bushra uh, thank you dr sir uh, dr najam the first question is uh, how about getting an hrct done in a patient with covid with a normal x ray <clears throat> uh, a mushkil question i'd say basically repeating the whole lecture <laughs> Sorry to say, आपने लेक्चर रिपीट नहीं करना सिर्फ जवाब देना है टाइम थोड़ा है वही अगर मॉडरेट टू सवियर डिजीज है प्रोग्रेसिव डिजीज है वर्सनिंग है देन यू ओनली डू इट द रीजन फॉर एनी फॉर्म ऑफ इमेजिंग एनी वेयर इन द बॉडी इज टू हैव एन इम्पैक्ट ऑन मैनेजमेंट एंड दैट्स द बॉटम लाइन एंड दैट्स वॉट वी आर होल्डिंग दोर्ट फॉर के अगर हम मैनेजमेंट नहीं चेंज कर सकते पेशेंट की वी विल नॉट इमेज तो एसिम्टोमेटिक है तो रहने दें कोई फायदा नहीं है अगर मॉडरेट से सवेयर की तरफ जा रहा है या एक्सरे के ऊपर वर्सनिंग हो रही है विच यू कॉन्ट डिसाइफर ऑन एक्सरे देन ओनली यू वुड डू इट डॉक्टर नजम प्लीज इलैबोरेट अपॉन द रिवर्स हेलो साइन वंस मोर ए पार्टिसिपेंट वंस टू बेसिकली वो ये रहा है कि उसमें एक कंसोलिडेटेड पैच आया है एंड इट स्टार्ट्स टू क्लियर फ्रॉम विद इन सो इट Uh, reverse ice cube phenomena, as we refer to it. Ice cube bar se melt hoti hai na, aur choti hoti jati hai. So ye andar se melt ho raha hai, aur bahar disease hai, aur andar cure aagi hui hai. So that th that's why it looks like a reverse halo. So disease periphery par aagi hai, beech mein se uh, reaeration shuru ho gayi hai. So that's why 
people think that this is a good prognostic uh, marker. Uh, Dr. Najam, how frequently should an X-ray be repeated in a patient who has moderate COVID-19? Especially if it's a major question, Chalra. I think this uh, across the globe is debated for uh, varying stages of patients. Say, if they were in ICU, वहाँ से शुरू करते हैं higher up से. Uh, everybody will have their own protocol. The argument is whether they should have an X-ray done morning and evening, or should they have done every day in 24 hours, or should they have it when there's a need for it? So you know, again, resource constraint है तो need पे चलेगा जहाँ resource constraint नहीं है वहाँ पे दिन में दो दफा ही हो रहा. So if you were to pick up few papers and articles from US, तो वो मैं हमें ये फारुक बताएगा आपको. They are also probably doing one X-ray every day for all their patients, more or less, in ICU. So, regular severity ka is my patient agar stable hai. Me example quote karta hu D H Hospital in Lahore does a chest X-ray morning and evening for all severe critical and ICU patients, irrespective. I know for sure. Ab uski kya basis hai? I can't explain that. So there's a lot of variation, but जो जहाँ तक anecdotally मुझे पता है और जो थोड़ा बहुत evidence है इसमें इतना strong evidence है नहीं है. I don't know of any. बाकी लोग मुझसे मुझे educate कर सकते हैं, but there is no consolidated evidence to tell us कि इसको किस frequently करना चाहिए. और जहाँ पे रह गया मामला mild disease और asymptomatic patients, you don't do that. You don't do that. Dr. Farooq, what pattern are you following? How frequently have you had your, your patient's x-rays done in your setting? So we, we only do them if we think that we're going to make a difference to their outcome, really. Um, if it's purely management-based. Do we do daily x-rays? No, the answer is not. If I have this decision, which are my pre-ICU patients, because I look after a pre-ICU COVID ward. And there's a difference between the two things. Um, I, I don't look after ICU. I don't even go to ICU. ICU guys, they do their own thing. Um, ICU may, once they've already intubated, then they do what they want. But we are only if it's clinically symptomatic, patient or decision difference, i.e. that I have to ICU in ICU. So then, yes, we will repeat in 24 hours. And the third thing that I told you earlier was with that graph. If your patient falls into that day 6 to day 12, if it's that and if it's deteriorating, then you have to act fairly quickly. And sometimes, yes, you do need x-ray or the follow-up x-ray to be able to make that decision. Do I have to refer to ICU or not? For you guys, जो टेली मेडिसिन कर रहे हैं हम लोग कितना फ्रीक्वेंटली एक्सरे को रिक्वेस्ट करें द गाइडलाइंस आर वेरी क्लियर माइल्ड के लिए बिल्कुल नहीं करना है सवीर के लिए बिल्कुल नहीं करना है बिकॉज़ यू ऑलरेडी नो के दोनों की आउटकम क्या है माइल्ड घर में रहेगा सवीर हॉस्पिटल जाएगा आपको इन्वॉल्व नहीं होना मॉडरेट के अंदर आपने एक्सरे जरूर करना है जो मॉडरेट कैटेगरी है उसमें आपको ए बी और सी हमने बताया हुआ है जो सी वाली कैटेगरी है उसमें आपने क्लिनिकल बेस पे सिक्स आवर पे रिव्यू करना है देस नो नीड टू आस पर रिपीट चेस्ट एक्सरे एंड इफ पेशेंट इज डिसीरेटिंग इट्स गोइंग टू गो टू द हॉस्पिटल सिर्फ ए और बी वो कैटेगरीज हैं जिसमें आई वुड रियली अर्ज यू पर्टिकुलरली इफ द पेशेंट कांटेक्ट्स यू बिटवीन डे सिक्स एंड डे ट्वेल्व ऑफ द इन्फेक्शन देन देर इज नो हार्म दैट यू रिपीट द एक्सरे विदिन 24 टू 48 आवर्स उन छह दिनों में अगर आप पेशेंट के दो से तीन एक्सरेस करवा भी लेते हो so, but the, the, the x-rays are only there for you to decide and make difference to the patient outcomes. And there's a very specific group just ko ghar mein rakh ke aap x-ray ki base mein manage kar sakte ho or decide kar sakte ho hospital refer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Faru. Uh, Dr. Najam, two quick questions. Um, one is, have you, what are the chances of residual or permanent lung parenchymal disease in a patient who has recovered from COVID? And how frequently would you uh, follow the patient up from the radiological point of view after discharge. So, have you noticed any residual or lung parenchymal damage? G. Manager has explained that 
you would have uh, uh, fibrosis at the end stage. Uh, majority of these patients, we again, where it's the point when you stop progressing. If you stop progressing at an early stage with the shallow consolidations and GGOs, then you probably would have traumatized your lung lesser compared to the patients who would have much more disease across uh, all segments. So injury pe dependent hai ki aap kis stage tak aage ja rahe so agar early stage mein aap pakade hain aur reversal shuru ho gaya then you would probably have minimal to nothing as fibrosis but if it is once and it's prolonged jo patient ka maslan uh, 21 uh, days plus ke upar reh rahe hain they would end up with lot of subtural fibrosis and traction bronchiectasis so wo uh, obviously uh, uh, jo end stage lung disease jisko kehte hain wo produce karenge but depends on how prolonged their stay is i'm i'm sure a clinical decision pe hi hoga ki inki fibrosis kitni aur follow up jo hai i don't think uh, i know of any protocol standard ke inko kaise follow up karna we haven't followed them up so far do teen mahine to guzre hain so nobody has uh, paid uh, much heed as to how they will be followed up in uh, long term so whether you need to really document complete resolution that's another point i don't think you need to agar ek shakhs severe disease ko touch karke moderate mein wapas aaya and now is okay so then uh, why do you want to document it ke uh, iski resolution ho gayi hai ya uske andar fibrosis jo hai aaj itni hai and tomorrow it will progress or not we don't know we don't know so there's so much we don't know actually क्योंकि हमारे पास टाइम लाइन में अभी इतना वो पेशेंट को होट ही नहीं आया वी हैवेंट रेड अबाउट इट वी हैवेंट थॉट अबाउट इट हमारा एक्सपोजर ही कम बड़ा लिमिटेड थैंक यू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज ए वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग केस सिनेरियो डॉक्टर सायरा हैज पोस्टेड इट शी हैज एनकाउंटर्ड ए पेशेंट इन द आईसीयू हु इज ऑन 12 टू 15 लीटर्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन कोविड डे 20 has developed surgical emphysema and pneumomediastinum on ct chest although has never been on ventilator or bipap how commonly have you people as radiologists come uh, across such a finding in a covid patient surgical yeah. emphysema and pneumomediastinum without the patient being on bipap or ventilator positive pressure ke bagair to maine to nahi abhi tak koi na padha na suna iski background mein disease ho तो उसकी एग्जेजरेशन हो सकती है लेकिन नॉट अदरवाइज आई डोंट नो फ्रैंकली क्वेश्चन का जवाब ये आई डोंट नो इट्स वेरी इट शुड बी वेरी अनकॉमन बट आई डोंट हैव एनी फिगर्स पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस मेरा नहीं है इनको बायपैप या सीपैप uh, भी नहीं मिला अभी तक कुछ भी नहीं नेवर बीन एंड नॉन सीओपीडी Uh, this has not been uh, mentioned uh, doc saira has the is the patient does the patient have coad or not uh, we'll have to find you out uh, that's okay that's fine i think we uh, 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 yeah. we have to go to dr asif nakwi uh, 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 can we unmute uh, professor asif nakwi uzair yes sir he has been requested to unmute himself जी जी सर जी सारेकुम अस्सलाम वालेकुम इट्स अ वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन एंड नजम इज मास्टर ऑफ दैट वंडरफुल मेरा पॉइंट जो है वो जस्ट वांटेड टू शेयर समथिंग एंड दैट इज इन रिलेशन टू पाकिस्तान सिचुएशन क्योंकि आई एम इन लाहौर और वी हैव सेट अप द कोविड केयर सेंटर रिसेंटली 3 4 वीक्स or this me farooq made a comment uh, uh, and said that you know uh, when the patient go to icu they do their own things so i think uh, it general point hai pakistan ke reference hai it's not relation to uk because is waqt jo wahan pe practices ho rahi hai wo uske different hai hame we have got a quite a dearth of uh, resource in term of uh, doctors who look after so i think it's a joint care so people from the medical or uh, intensivists or anesthetists they have to do this care together and there's not no differentiation in that sense that they can go to ic 
HDU or 2HDU. The other thing is a lot of things which are non-invasive ventilation which happens actually happens in ICU, but they are in that the I think involvement of physicians is as important as the intensive intensivist or anesthetist. I think we see in our physicians a, a kind of reluctance to get into the IC situation and they want to leave it for the anesthetist to sort out things. Whereas several components are being looked after there. So although it's, uh, I'm sorry, that's not a radiological based question, but this is something that I think we need to be aware in, in Pakistan situation. And it is a general point which I thought I'll, I'll, I'll air it. Thank you. May I see if it's an interesting experience share that the hospital has the largest number of patients. Intensive is to care. They write a call to the pulmonology department to visit a patient, which is very interesting. If you have a pulmonology department, you call a call. This is what you are referring to. So the pulmonologist should jump. It uh, depends on the US trained, hai, US se hai. So all intensivists will be pulmonologists more or less. They are always overlapped and they are always working together. This is our situation thodi different. We call the pulmonologist ko bilkul bar mein bulate hai, jab and in fact, pulmonology does not visit any uh, uh, COVID uh, ICU patients uh, in any of these big centers in Lahore. I know that for sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, it's about time. Uh, uh, thank you very much all. Uh, before I just take some brief comments from Dr. Altaf and go to Kiran. Uh, our next session will be on Saturday and that will be managing anxiety and anxiety for both patients and doctors. Again, it will be 10 p.m. Saturday and Professor Iqbal Afridi uh, who's a consultant psychiatrist from JPMC Karachi will be uh, will be the speaker. Um, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for registering. Ye thora sa ye process ham leke chalenge registration ka. I know that there are attendance effect hoti hai, lekin we need to do that uh, quickly. Doctor Altaf, for your comments, and then over to Kiran. Uh, thank you very much. It remains for me to uh, thank specially uh, Doctor Najam, uh, Doctor Farooq. Professor Asif Abbas Nakwi and uh, Javed Iqbal Farooqi and many others uh, whom I may forget to name, but uh, you know, it has been a wonderful session, very interactive. Uh, thank you everyone for participating. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ilhaf. Uh, we would like to thank PMA Gujamala and District Health Authority Gujamala for their support and Mr. Osman Wahid of Ferozan's Laboratories, Laboratories for unrestricted educational grant. Also, I'm thankful to our PARSA team, our uh, chairman, Chohadri Sohail Akhtar, Dr. Asad Ali Chaudhary, our director, Mr. Tabarak Hussain, Secretary PARSA Trust, Dr. Amna, our facilitator and echo lead by arm, Mr. Uzair, our clinic coordinator, Mr. Haris, IT support and Salman. This session, as others, will also be available on our YouTube channel. Allah Hafiz, Uzair, over to you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Till next time, Allah Hafiz to all of you.